Let's see what we've got today. Okay, so um, this is our table of contents of what we'll cover today. Uh, we're gonna cover why weed the youth collection. We're gonna talk a lot about weeding by condition. Um, just if you're new, how do you start to weed? How do you start to weed sections of your youth collection? And we'll also talk about the sections themselves, everything from board books and picture books all the way up to children's nonfiction. Um, so we'll really do a deep dive into the sections. We'll also talk about helpful resources for examining books. We'll also talk about creating a weeding spreadsheet, and I'll go over that in a little bit. Some parting reminders and some weeding resources. So first of all, why do we spend time weeding the youth collection? Just simply, why? Weeding is so important for your collection, especially for kids and teens and for young babies and toddlers. When you weed, when we, sorry, weeding creates room for new materials. New books come out every day and you need to have the space to have those materials in your library. Weeding makes your collection appealing. It makes it attractive for a child or to flip through those picture book bins or a teen when they see all these cool new books. It makes your collection appealing to them and they want to check out what you have. Um, weeding makes patrons locate your items easier. It's very frustrating when a patron cannot find the book that they really want at that time on your shelf. So weeding helps those patrons locate the items that they need quickly and easy and ready for checkout. Weeding helps keep your collection relevant and current. You want to have the popular titles and the current materials. So if you have a child coming in that's working on a report about the human body, you want to make sure you have current, up-to-date materials to help them support their learning so they can get that A on that project or paper about the human body. So it's keeping your collection relevant and current to your community. And weeding helps you remove outdated materials. I mean, there's just so many outdated materials. You, you don't want to give a child or a teen a book from 1978 and it's not relevant, current. They need that up-to-date information so that way they can get the info that they need. And weeding adapts to your community's wants and needs. What is it that your community wants? What is it that your children want? What is it that your teen patrons want? When you weed, you're adapting to their needs by purchasing the items that they're asking for. And finally, weeding helps you learn what's in your collection, especially if you're new and you're a new youth librarian and you don't know what to do. Weeding helps you learn what's in your collection currently and what is needed? What are some of those books that you don't have that, oh, maybe I need to, to order some? So we're gonna talk about weeding by condition. And let me forewarn you, these pictures are kind of gross. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So condition-wise, you will see books that come into your library like this, and let's just face it, they're gross. Mold. I have seen some moldy books, and that is one thing you do not want on your in your collection because mold spreads. It it, it spreads. Um, this is a really good picture of. Let's see. This is the book. The out. I believe it's uh, a S. C. Hinton book, and there's mold on top of the books or of the book. Just yeah, yikes. Fonda saying yikes. Yes, this is something you do not want in your collection. Having moldy books that mold will spread. Um, so definitely that's something you want to withdraw from your collection, recycle it, order a new copy. Water damage. In the middle is water damage. How many of you guys see books come back looking just like this? <laughs> it's it's pretty, pretty gross. <laughs> yes, I see two people. Yes. Water damage. You don't want books that are water damaged in your collection. It's unattractive. Sometimes they smell. Um, oh, I see Joan says pool season is bad from water damage. Yes. Um, but these are kind of, these are just really gross books you do not want to have in your collection. It's just gross. Just, just gross, gross, gross. And 
writings or markings or scribbles. This is a picture of a book, looks like two books. Uh, both of them have markings in them. There's writing in them. Uh, I will tell you the previous library that I worked at um, here in Des Moines, when I started to go through the sections of nonfiction, I was reading a section, I believe it was the sexuality section about sex and gender. And there was a section about abortion and someone took it upon themselves to not only cross out the the passage that they didn't agree with, but they would write in the, in the sides, abortion is horrible, sex before uh, marriage is awful. I mean, they wrote pretty much a manifesto inside this book. And I had to remove it because it's not okay to have books on the shelves that are marked, blackened out uh, with writings on the side. It's not helpful to your patrons and it's not helpful for your collection. So keep in mind these condition factors when you weed. Other condition factors, you might see dirty or damaged binding. And this is a picture of a picture book called Lazy Fox and Red Hen. Um, you can see the top left of the book has damaged binding and it's just really gross. It's yeah, nasty. Um, other condition factors, if a book has missing pieces or pages, uh, children don't want something that's broken. Um, they don't want books that are missing pages. So keep that in mind when you're looking at condition. Yes, someone said, looks like Lazy Fox got hungry. Yes, someone did. Someone got hungry with Lazy Fox and Red Hen. Um, and also broken pieces. You don't want a book, if it especially has those lift the tabs and pulls, you don't want broken pieces in that. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more as we go on. So with weeding, there is the musty method. And this is in the crew manual. It's a weeding manual for modern libraries. And this is the musty method. If you can see, um, it's misleading. If something is factually inaccurate, your weed, if it's ugly, if something is worn and beyond mending or rebinding, if superseded, so if there's a new edition or a much better book on the subject, you should weed the, out the older copy. If something is trivial, so if it's if it catches ephemeral interest or if it's something from the past that is just kind of kind of trivial, like trivial books, um, you will need to pull that. If it's irrelevant, if it's irrelevant to the needs of your of the interests of your community, you may decide to pull it. And if it's found elsewhere, so interlibrary loan, can you get it? Can you get that book on interlibrary loan? Can you get it as an ebook, audiobook, e audiobook, et cetera? So M U S T I E spells the musty method, and you'll use this when you go to weed. So this is the musty method formula. This is the example of it. So the first number, that eight, it means that the copyright is more than X amount of years old. So this is, so you would read if the book is, has a copyright over eight years old. The second number is the last circulation that that book had if it was more than X amount of years. So X amount of years ago, excuse me. And the third criteria that you will use is if it fits any of those musty categories, if it's misleading, ugly, superseded, trivia, um, found elsewhere or relevant. So that is the musty method formula. And you'll find all of this in the crew manual. And this is by the Texas Library Archives. Um, I, I've put the web, the web link to this in my slides. So that way you're able to access that as well. So, how do I start to weed? Let's take a peek. So what I like to do is I like to look at your library's collection development policy. Look at the goals for your collection. What does that collection, develop, collection development policy state? What are the goals for your collection? Really read through this before you start to weed. 
And then once you do read over it, run a statistics report. See all the books that need to be weeded. Run, run that statistic report and it'll tell you what books to pull. And if you're really, really new, sit in the shelves. Go shelf by shelf. Look at those books. Look if they're just gross, damaged. Sometimes you'll see books on the shelf and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so yellow. How is this on here? Really look at those shelves. Take a peek at what you have. Um, maybe you might find duplicates. Do you have duplicates on the shelf that are taking up prime real estate space? So go shelf by shelf, especially if you're new. Um, this is a picture of a shelf of books. So up at the top of the new junior, fi or, uh, junior fiction section, they have their books displayed very nicely. That middle section is very, very tight. There's not that much space. Um, so really go through those books. I mean, and also when you're going shelf by shelf, have a cart with you, have some Clorox wipes with you, because when you're going through looking at the books, you really need to see if they're, sometimes you might come across dirty books. So it's nice to have some Clorox wipes and maybe a paper towel with you to kind of wipe down um, books because you really want your books to be clean. You really want your books to be appealing to youth and teens. Um, so go by self, shelf by shelf. Really look at the books that you have. Really get to know what's in your collection. How many... Um, how many different uh, series do you have? So go shelf by shelf in your collection. And finally, look at the copyright of the titles. Uh, this book at the bottom, uh, I remember this book when I was working in Des Moines at uh, Southside Library. I found when I started to get to know the collection, there was a book on the shelf and it was this in the nonfiction section, and it was uh, Sesame Street Sign Language ABC, with Linda Bove. And this book was from 1985, number one. And number two, it was a book with a cassette tape. And I thought, oh my God, this is so old. No, no one uses cassette tapes anymore. And I went to go pull it off the shelf and withdraw it. And come to find out that book was already withdrawn, but somebody accidentally put it back on the shelf. So you will you see these things happen. So really look at the copyright, look at the titles, go shelf by shelf, really look and see is on your shelves, what is in your collection. So now we're gonna take a peek at the sections. So our first section are board books. Board books are heavy, they're sturdy, they have sturdy pages, and there's all different kinds of board books. For this section, for board books, you're gonna weed by condition because there's so many different types of board books and this is a well-loved collection. This is a, um, it's a very well-used collection and they are just, they're so full, they're just used all the time. So you're really gonna check for your broken spines or your bindings, if there's stains or teeth marks. How many of you guys have seen board books come back with red, red Kool-Aid or some type of pink Kool-Aid on the spines or on the board pages? Let me see those hands raised. Oh yeah, I see, I see a couple, yes. Yeah, I see a lot of people like, yes, yes, I see this. You, you see this all the time with board books. Um, sometimes you'll see Kool-Aid. Sometimes you'll see food, food stains. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I need a Clorox wipe. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Water damage. Uh, sometimes the board pages are stuck together or they're torn. They're torn and retaped. I see a lot of this where the books, the board books, the spines are retaped so much that you can't see the title. And I put an arrow next to this, um, but you see that for this picture, for the Mickey get ready for, I can't see the rest of the title or a birthday for cow or where's dad. This is supposed to be where's David, but this book, the 
rest of the spine is missing. So I can't see the title and the patron can't see the, see the title. Um, teeth marks. I see somebody says, yes, teeth marks, fairy, absolutely. Teeth marks. But you don't want to give a child a broken book. When, when children go to the bookstore, they get brand new books. We as librarians should be offering the same type of quality books for our children. Um, and this other picture on the side are just uh, examples of water damage books. Again, there's books that you can't see the spine, you can't see the title. Um, these are well-loved books. They are worn out. Um, so you really want to make sure that you have quality books, even for your youngest of patrons, and just to make sure that they're not broken. And at the top here, excuse me, uh, this is a book that has a broken spine. And sometimes you can tell a book is broken when you open it up and you're like, oh my gosh, the pages are falling apart. Um, you definitely want to withdraw that because you want to make sure you're ordering quality materials and you don't want to spend time taping and retaping. Also with board books, um, how many of you guys have broke books that have uh, tabs or the lift the flaps? Any of you guys? Yes, I, I see a lot of people raising, raising their hands. Yes, wonderful. Check for those Check for those books. Do they have broken tabs? Do they have missing pieces? Um, this one is a book called Feelings and this one is the pull the tab book where you pull it and then there's another image inside. These books, they break very, very easily. Um, so you don't wanna spend time retaping and retaping. Same thing with your missing lift the flaps. What's going to be the best use of your time? Taping and using up all your book tape or just withdrawing it and ordering a fresh copy or something similar to it? Um, so think about that when you're going through the board books. And also, there's some books that have sound buttons. Do they work? Are the batteries dead? Can you get to the battery? Can you get the battery out and and try to replace it with a new battery. Really take a peek at those board books. And yes, all that poking. <laughs> Linda says, yes, all that poking. Um, so really take a peek. This collection is a self-weeding collection. What do I mean by self-weeding? What I mean is, is that certain things get weeded because they're so used, they're so well-loved and they're so used. And usually a lot of these self weeding items, they tend to get lost. And the lost items, those are ones that you definitely want to look for too when you're weeding because the, the lost items are sometimes the most popular items as well. Let me see, let me go to my next slide here. So now we're going to switch gears and try picture books. So with your picture books, for, and I'm just going to say this, um, from now to about children's nonfiction, I have at the top in blue, the page number in the crew manual, where you need to look um, for conditions for each section that I will be covering. So I just want to make sure I let everybody know that. So, and yes, Linda says, oh my gosh, the sound books, the sound book batteries cost more than the books. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, so for picture books and how to weed picture books, you want to look at page 81 in the crew manual. This is the formula you will use. So X to musty and your criteria, you want to look, you want to use the musty acronym, con the condition of the book and the statistics. And you're going to definitely check the book's condition. So look for those torn retaped covers, broken spines, poor binding, if you have tape pages that you've been taping over and over and over again, chances are you just need to withdraw it and play and get a new copy. If it has scribbles, sometimes scribbles you can save. You can save scribbles. I mean, if, if, you, if you have a eraser, you can save it. But then there's other times where you get a book that's returned and you can't save it because there's just scribbles all around. Just withdraw it, get a new copy. Um, stains, water damage, if it's missing or missing pages or torn or really, really torn up pages where you just can't look at the book. 
just withdraw it. Get in that fresh copy. The other thing I want to mention is look at the copyright of each book. Really take a peek and review those books and ask yourself, does it match with the values of your community? Um, there's a book, the and just one example, um, and I have my notes here, the story of the little black Sam, Sam buff. This is an old picture book from 1899. Um, the content in it is about a young a young little boy who loses his jacket and his his pants, and he has to run away from these tigers. And then he comes home and eats 169 uh, pancakes. But it's a little black child, and the images in it are are of a racist nature. They're kind of they're just inappropriate. So really look at the copyright, really look at the books. Does it match with the values of your community? If you, if your mission statement and your values say, we are a welcoming, diverse library, and then you have items such as that book, really take a peek at it. Does this match the values of your community? Does this match your, your mission statement, your values? Really examine that and take a peek at it. And I know a lot of you have picture book bins. Um, weed, if your picture book bins are too tight. I mean, you have kids dipping through that picture book bin, trying to find a book, and, they're, and they found the book that they want, only they're pulling out four or five other books just to get to that one book. Or if you have library shelvers, and they're trying to shelve a picture book back into the bin, and they can't do it, that's a problem. You, you need to weed. And at my old job, what we did, if we had a library shelver that could not shelve the picture books, they would fill out a little form just like this. And it says, space is tight. I've run out of room to shelve the following. And it'll say the collection, the call range, the call number, the range where they can't shelve and any comments for the librarians and then the library aide's name and the date. And so I would get this sheet and that tells me, oh, one of the library aides says, hey, bin A through B, they can't shelve anything because it's tight. So that tells me, okay, I need to go through that bin and weed. Um, and, and you're more than welcome to use this. You're more than welcome to create your own form, but this is not, this is helpful for you so that way, your shelvers can help you to tell you, yes, your bins are tight. You really need to weed. Um, so really think about weeding your picture book bins um, because it's, if it's hard for a shelver to shelve it, it's hard for a kid or a parent to pull that item from your bin as well. And I just wanted to give you an example of weeding in practice. Um, with the permission of Jean from Eldora Public Library, she was very kind to share this picture. Um, this is a picture of their picture book section. And uh, Joan, the director, was going through a weeding process. And I asked her if she could please share with me this picture of her before and after. So this is before weeding. So let's see those very, some shelves are very tight, some shelves aren't tight. And after weeding. Look at those beautiful shelves. There's space, there's space to grow more books. She actually has room for each section. She has picture books up at the top. Um, so that's what Weedy can do. I'm just gonna show you again. Before, after. I mean, it's beautiful. This is the kind of shelving you want to have in your library. You want shelves that are nice, very nice looking so that way kids and parents can find items and access your shelves easier. With early readers, you're gonna use the same criteria. You're gonna use the musty method and your statistics. Um, you'll check for the book's condition with the retape covers, broken spines, scratch CDs, the stains, water damage, missing torn pages. Also, you definitely want to, with your book sets, check that the contents are in the box. So the parent letter, 
Um, if there's any other little pieces, especially with those Bob books, Bob books have the parent letter, and then they usually have like nine or 10 books in the set. Um, so this would be a good time to really take a peek, make sure that everything is in there. And if something's missing, you know, maybe if you if you have that patron's number, you know, you can call them and say, hey, this is missing or, you know, withdraw it, get a new copy in. Children's read along kits. So these are the books with that come with the CD where you can play in the CD player or in the car and, and have the story read to you. You'll follow the same reading criteria. So musty condition statistics. Really pay attention if there's missing CDs because no one wants to check out a read-along kit if the CD isn't in there. And especially if it's scratched up, nobody wants to have that. So check for missing CDs. Check for outdated content. Is the content relevant to your community right now? And what about those kits, those circulating kits, which are super popular right now? My advice to you is to check your circulation reports. Are they circulating? You, you may have, I don't know, 30, 50 kits. Are they circulating? Are some moving or are some not moving? Look at the musty method to look at your kits. Are there broken pieces, missing items, damaged items? Um, and if they're not circulating, is there a way that you can display them to help give them a chance at circulating? Now we're gonna go into children's fiction. So children's fiction, you will look at pages 81, 82 of the crew manual, and you really want to weed items that haven't circulated within the last two years. And keep the books that are in high demand. If you know kids are looking for the bad guys or they're looking for the last kids on earth, you wanna make sure you keep those books in high demand and make sure that they're there for your patrons. Weed books that are no longer popular. I mean, and these this is just an example of books um, that are no longer popular. I mean, who's asked you for a Hannah Montana book lately or A Full House with Michelle on the cover? Or let me see, this is The Wizards of Waverly Place. Um, Ghost Rider, I remember this book when I was a kid. I remember the show on PBS when I was a kid. Um, but read those books that are no longer popular that kids aren't asking for. Um, and look what books with stereotypes, racial biases. Um, and I and, and look at like this book here, The Shimmer Shine Queens. Look at the clothing. Kids don't wear that clothing anymore. And with the Shimmer Shine Queens, this artwork, it shows black girls with their hair braided. It's it's very stereotypical. So really look at look at all these things. Look at things that aren't popular and pull them because they're they're taking valuable real estate space. And freshening up your well-loved classics. Um, this is a picture of the Babysitter's Club. This is the first book in the series. I don't know if any Babysitter Club fans, I grew up with Babysitter Club books. I had all of them. I had the mystery section. Uh, the mystery section of Babysitter's Club, and I had the super secret edition, all those editions. Um, but really, freshen up those covers. Um, this is the cover from the 80s when I grew up, and then now they have the these fresher cover um, with the Netflix show because it is a Netflix series. Um, so this is the chapter book that's next to the older cover of the chapter book, and then they have the graphic novel. Um, but just freshening up those covers and giving them new life, it'll help attract your kids to those sections. And especially with Babysitter Club books, I would definitely have the chapter books and the graphic novels to give a choice, um, because I know there's some parents that really want to have their child read the chapter book. And then you have those parents that say, OK, yeah, try the graphic novel. So offer both. Offer both uh, types for kids. I remember uh, Ramona Quibby. Age eight, I remember this cover as a kid, and this is the fresher cover next to it. Um, Goosebumps, Goosebumps, these are the older older covers. 
And then that final one to the right is the newer version. Junie B. Jones, this is the older cover next to it. And then this is the newer cover on the right. And update your book covers because there's some older titles that could use a little love. Um, I have a company of Bridge to Terabithia and this is, this is the older cover and next to it is the newer cover. And especially if you have books that are being made into movies, like Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. That has been a huge, huge hit because um, that came out a couple years, or excuse me, a couple, couple months ago. Um, this is the older cover, and then this is the new cover that ties into the movie. Um, so think about it. Think, think about updating your covers, giving them some new life. We're going to move to teen fiction. Teen fiction, um, that section on page 82 of the crew manual, you'll follow this form, 3-2 musty. So if it hasn't circulated within uh, two years, and if it hasn't, if it has a copyright older than three years, you want to keep this section very current. Keep it very current because teen books are go, they are outdated so fast. They they lose their popularity fast. So keep this section very current. And weed items that haven't circulated within the last two years. And you definitely want to weed books with outdated dust jackets or cover art. Whoo, it was so fun looking at these old, <laughs> these old covers, um, especially this one, this party line. How many of you know teens that still use a regular house phone? Um, I was looking at that. I was like, wow. Um, and this 18 Pine Street, I mean, girls don't wear that type of clothing. Look, at the clothing is old. Um, and I, the R.L. Stein call waiting. No one uses a home telephone anymore. Um, so really look at your collection um, and just really take a peek at what's in it. And replace your worn out copies with newer editions. Um, for example, Judy Bloom's Forever. This is a older copy. And then the copy next to it is a newer one, a newer version from 2014. Uh, this one of the Outsiders, this is the older copy. And then this is the 50th anniversary edition. And someone says, I, I agree, our team books hardly go out. Think of ways to display them. Display them. Give, give them that extra chance to see if they'll circulate. Think about highlighting books in a display. Becky, I agree with Becky. Putting them out, fa facing them out on the end of a shelf. Absolutely. Give that book another chance to see if it'll circulate. So what about books in a series for children or teens? If you have one or more titles in your weeding list from the same series, pull the whole series. And you really need to look at the other titles in the series. Look at when they last circulated. If you have more, more titles from one whole series, chances are those other titles aren't moving. They're not, they're not moving. So you might need to pull the whole series. And Pick up something that's better suited for your community or something that's well-written and ask yourself, is this series still popular? Are kids and teens still asking for it? If they're not asking for it and if it's not popular, you need to let it go. And if you are going through your series books and you're like, wow, um, I don't have number two of Harry Potter or man, I'm going through the bad guy series and I don't have books, let's see, uh, four through 17. That tells you, okay, I need to, I need to order these titles. I need to fill up those holes. I need to have the run of series in my collection. Now we are going to switch gears to children's nonfiction. And I don't know if you can tell, but that book. It's really, really old. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is a Carpentry for Kids book, but very, very old. 
I really wanted to focus on a couple of sections with children's nonfiction for the interest of time. Um, definitely, this is the space and astronomy section of children's nonfiction. Really read books that still state Pluto is a planet. Um, Pluto became a dwarf planet in 2006. Go through this section and really look at those books that still state that Pluto is a planet. Um, and read books that have outdated theories or outdated information on major disasters. You really need to look at this section um, and just to make sure that it is current. And in the crew method, it's page 70 of the crew method for the space and astronomy section. So you'll look at the copyright date, which is if it's older than five years, if it hasn't circulated with more than three years, and then use your musty criteria to determine. Also in your health section, which is six tens, um, same criteria, five, three, musty, page 71 of the crew method. You want to weed out books with outdated information and illustrations or pictures. Um, nobody wants to check out a book from 1995 about bones. This is this book, Bones. This is from 1995. But look at, look at the pictures. The pictures are outdated. The clothing, it's not appealing for kids. And especially if they're working on a report, you want to make sure that they have accurate information at their hands so that way they can find the information they need. Um, so you really wanna keep this section current. And children's nonfiction with history, state books specifically, um, if the copyright is older than 10 years, and if it's less than three years, and your criteria musty, look at those state books. Uh, this is on page 64 of the crew method especially your Iowa State books. Um, this top book here is uh, Scholastics, My United States, Iowa. This is a great book. Um, I had this at my old library. Um, but look at your Iowa State books. If they still state that Robert E. Ray or Terry Branstad or Chet Col Culver is still the governor, pull them. <laughs> they are old. Um, really take a peek at what you have for your Iowa collection, um, for your Iowa state books. And on the subject of state books, um, the state, New York, the state of New York, really take a peek at those because we had September 11th, we had the World Trade Center. Does your New York state books still state that the World Trade Center is still standing? Look at the data, look at look and see if it's outdated and you want to refresh those with newer copies, newer titles. So you're going through books, you're examining and you're like, I don't know if I should read this. What should I do? I, I don't know how to how to look up this. How do what do I do? Um, so. Here are some helpful resources for examining books. So for picture book and easy reader resources, we have two, we have these two books at the State Library of Iowa. This is the Children's Core Collection. This is the 26th edition, but it has over 15,000 reviews for books from preschool age all the way to sixth grade. And it has reviews on chapter books, picture books, even graphic novels. So you can look through those to determine, oh man, I should, I need to keep this. That would be a perfect book to grab. For picture books, there's also the A to Zoo subject access to children's picture books. This is the 10th edition, but it goes through a list of picture books you should have in your collection. The other thing that I like to use when I started to get to know the collection, especially picture books, because picture books are your largest circulating collection in the youth department. Use school library journals, top 100 picture books. I use this as my core list of picture books that should that I should have in my collection. Um, I also, with the resources today, 
I've put together the PDF of this of this whole list. So you'll be able to get this as well. So that way you'll you have access to it. But I love this list because it gives you all 100 types of picture books that you should have in your collection. These are well-loved picture books, well-known picture books that you should just have. Children's fiction. So again, look at that children's court collection. Look inside there to determine, oh man, I need to keep this book. So it has all different types of reviews, over 15,000. Take a peek and that way you can determine whether or not this is a book you need to keep or if it's a book you need to let go. The New York Public Library has the 100 greatest children's books of the last 100 years list. Um, this list is a mix of picture book and children's fiction titles, and it is a wonderful list. So definitely take a peek. I've added that to the resources as well for you guys. Also, take a peek at School Library Journal. School Library Journal has their best books list that they publish at the end of December. And it goes from, currently it goes from 2017 up to 2022, excuse me. So you'll be able to take a peek at all different kinds of the best books list for all those years. They also have a good comics for kids section. If you're starting to weed the graphic novels, you can look on the good comics for kids section to see whether or not you really need to keep this book. Um, they also publish a best graphic novels list each year as well. For teen fiction and teen nonfiction, Yalsa is going to be your best bet. They have for fiction, the Prince Award. Um, so these are award-winning titles. So maybe you have a, an award-winning title in your hand or or not, and you don't know if it's an award-winning title, you can check on Yalsa because they have a list of all the winners every year for the Prince Award. They also have lists for nonfiction for young adults. They have an award section for that. Um, looks like Sioux City uses EBSCO to look at children's and teen core collections as well. Beautiful. Um, they also have a best fiction for young adults list and, that, and those lists are published each year. They have great graphic novels lists and a teen's top 10 list um, that is every year. And that is the teen's top 10 list is picked by teens. Um, so definitely look at those when determining what items to keep. Yalsa also has a book finder section. Um, that's the web link there. You can type in a title and it'll pull up whether or not it's on an award-winning list. Um, it's very cool. They have over 4,000 books on this book finder. Super cool. Um, and Linda says it's also a good idea to check with your teachers too. If they're having kids read a book, they'll be looking for the rest of the series too. Absolutely. School Library Journal, again, it's going to be also your best bet with their best books issue. Um, they also have a teen librarian toolbox on there, which has uh, book reviews. They talk about different books. They also have craft activities as well. Um, but teen librarian toolbox is going to be your best bet too. I'm trying to keep on time, so bear with me, guys, and I appreciate everyone. Um, so the one thing I also like to do is I create a weeding spreadsheet and schedule when you're going to weed. Um, I just used Microsoft Excel to create a weeding spreadsheet, and I documented the sections that I weeded. So I put down the date of when I weeded, and I recommend keeping a, re a record of your weeding for your director, especially in terms of space. So that way, if they're asking why, why you need more space and you can say, well, I weeded this date, this date, this date, and this collection is growing using your statistics. Um, so keep a record of your weeding for your director, especially in terms of your space. And this document is not set in stone. You can adapt the document to your needs. And as far as when to weed, Weed right after summer reading and weed when space is tight. Summer reading is the best time to circulate books. It is the best time because you have kids that are, they have a lot of free time. Teens, teens are busy. 
they have time, but they have time to read. And maybe you run a weeding report and you're like, oh man, I don't know if I should weed out this book. I really don't know. Put it on display during summer reading. Give that book another chance. And if after summer reading, you realize, oh man, these books aren't moving, then yeah, it's time to let them go. So weed right after summer reading and weed when your space is tight. And I like what, let's see, King Denise says, we have put books on the end shelves in all of our sections to see if they circulate. Wonderful. Excellent. And just we did 74 out of teen fiction last week, uh, Judy says. Wonderful. And just to show you, this is the example that I used at Southside Library. Um, but I had every category for teen, for children's, children's nonfiction, and then I would write down the date of when I last weeded just to keep myself on track. If my senior librarian or supervisor asked, then I knew what to do. And I knew, and I knew, here you go. Here's, here's my data. Here's what I've done. Um, so everything in the teen section, uh, children's fiction, series, biographies, graphic novels, foreign language, books on CD, um, and then nonfiction and easy readers. Um, so board books, your picture books, uh, picture foreign language, book kits with CDs, your holiday books. Think about holidays too, because you need to have those weeded before the holiday comes up um, and your picture books. Oh, at the bottom, I put picture book series bin I had in the library a set of bins where I had series picture books. So like Disney, Disney Princess, uh, Dora the Explorer, Nickelodeon, um, ABCs, one, two, threes, that those type of bins. If you notice certain book, book characters aren't circulating, like Dora the Explorer, check to see, check to see if the show is still on if it's still showing show if they're still showing shows like bob the builder bob the builder that show ended what was it 2017 no one was asking for bob the builder let it go you have to make space book characters especially those little eight by eight paperbacks book cartoon characters they the popularity wanes so fast so really adapt your bins to the needs of your community if you have kids coming in asking for bluey picture books Oh man, I need to get some bluey in. Um, so really, really think about that. And some parting reminders. Ooh, I'm doing good on time. Your collection matters. Your collection matters to your kids. It matters to the parents or caregivers that come that come in to look for books. It matters to the teens who are looking for mangas or graphic novels. So really get to know your collection. You are the library expert. You know what's in your collection. Get to know it. Get to know everything that's in your collection because you're the library expert. And be ruthless in re weeding. Be ruthless. Make a weeding schedule. Plan it. And write down items you need to replace as you go. Um, that was helpful to me because if I was weeding, let's say, the health books, and I... And I realized, oh man, I need puberty books. I need books about puberty and periods. I made sure I wrote down that I needed books. And as you go, you'll see what sections have holes in them that, oh man, we don't have anything about uh, camping or we don't have anything about sewing for kids. Write down those areas that have no books that, on that topic and write them down so that way you can find replacement items for them. And there are weeding resources here, the crew method, that's the link to the actual um, crew manual method. Um, there's a couple of articles that you can look at that talks about the importance of weeding. Um, like I said, I put together also the School Library Journal's 100 Top Picture Books you should have in your collection and the New York Public Library's uh, 100 books as well. Those will be available to you as well. And the weeding spreadsheet template, I have all of that for you. And remember, 
keep calm and let it go. Let it go. You can get, yeah. Anyway, just let it go. <laughs> Every time I think of weeding, I always think of that song. I saw Becky say, let it go. I see Judy, yes, let it go. It's so cathartic when you weed and it feels good. It feels good because you're making space. You're making space and you're going to get some new stuff for your kids. Kids love new stuff. So yes, when you weed, play that song in your head. You don't have to sing it out loud. Yeah, I know Joan says we'll be singing Let It Go all day. But when you weed, definitely just keep calm and let it go. So thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad I got that. I got most of, yes, I got everything covered. Whew. Yay. Hey, Janae, we had two questions come in that I don't think I heard you answer. And if you did, my apologies, because I was working on names. Okay. Um, but one of them that was early on, I thought was really interesting. I'd like to hear your take. Um, she said, I wonder with the new legislation in Iowa, are we going to have more high school age kids coming in to do research? The library, the high school library here in Crisco has taken a hit over the last couple of years. How might that impact um, both weeding and collection development in terms of purchasing um, and the rest? Do you have advice on that? I or feel like insights? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, with the current legislation, I feel that kids, that if they need that information, they are going to come to the public library because the public library is going to be that place where they find books that they're wanting to either study about or or if they need, you know, books, what was it, books about LGBTQ or whatnot. Mm -hmm. With that current legislation, which is uh, HF 496, there are certain guidelines and there and if they if the teachers break any of those or the public li school librarians if they violate those rules um they get a lot of consequences so yes i do see that kids will be coming to the public library because there are no rules for the public library as far not as yet. legislative rules excuse me not yet not yet <laughs> i worry it's coming what about classics like Little House on the Prairie series? That's a great question. School Library Journal has addressed this. They have a series on series section where they have talked about if your if your community is not not reading Little House on the Prairie and addressing those uh, racial uh, situations in the book, um, finding replacements that would that are similar to Little House on the Prairie. So I would take a peek at that. Another question that came in sort of towards the end is best ways to dispose of weeded um, books. Um, one's in bad condition go into the trash because nobody's going to pick them out and go, why did you weed this? But what about those that aren't in poor shape or maybe aren't terribly outdated? Um, my advice on that one is always black garbage bags. I learned that one. Yes, my kids exactly, are little. Exactly you you can never say. put them in white garbage bags where they no. can see through it. Why are you throwing this out? But do have better advice than just black garbage bags. No, I agree. Because we had did that too. Get black garbage bags and wait till, you know, almost closed. We had a dumpster outside, caddy corner from the library. Tie it up, drop it in there. So... Yeah, that's kind of mine um, as well. I hope this was helpful. Was it? Did did any, everybody find this helpful? I hope. <laughs> what I what I really liked was breaking it down by sections. That was really helpful to me. I've had to do weeding for youth collections because I was a youth librarian for a long time. But I always struggled with what's the difference between weeding for adults and weeding for kids. And I and so I think you're breaking it down by each of those sections was really helpful for me anyway, that really kind of cemented things. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's hard. I know it's hard. I've had people ask me about weeding, especially like, what if the book, the book still looks so new? Yeah, it still looks so new, but you rather have things on your shelves that are up to date and accurate than a shiny new book that still has old outdated junk in it. Um, yep. So really go through those sections. And there is tons of data out there, even when you aren't able, because money is tight, we know that. And so, yes, yes if you weed 
25% of your teen collection, you're going to have a smaller collection if you can't afford to, to really up that. But there is study after study after study that shows a weeded collection goes out more. So that feels yes. counterintuitive. If I have less books, it feels like you should be seeing less circ. But you will find after a really good weeding project, your circ goes through the roof. It really changes dramatically. Yes. And also think about, is your collection equitable? Is it equitable? Making sure children see themselves in a book. Right. Um, Because, I mean, I remember as a kid growing up reading a lot of adult books because there was nothing that showed, nothing that that appealed to me. Um, And now there's such a plethora of books for all different types of readers, all readers can see themselves in books now. Um, so really think about, is your collection equitable? Are kids able to see themselves when they pick up a book? Mm-hmm. And avoiding those stereotypes, and especially the old clothing. <gasps> oh. <laughs> One of the other things that, that people have talked to me about is, okay, Janae, that's great. We want to have, you know, reflective of our community what if we don't have anybody in our community? Why do I need to have a diverse collection if my percentage of minorities is, you know, 0.01%? And I really love the idea of, let's see if I can get it right. You maybe can explain this better than I. Books are yeah. windows and mirrors. And so what you were just talking about, it's that mirror. It's a place for me to see myself reflected in the books in the collection. But they're also windows for those kids who don't have that experience to be able to give it to them in a book, I think is really cool. Yes. So uh, you're, you're talking about Dr. Ruth Sims Bishop, and she talked about windows, sliding doors. So okay. windows, mirrors, sliding doors. You want kids to be able to see themselves and you want kids to see how the uh, how other people live. Mm-hmm. That's how we grow as individuals, seeing other perspectives, other cultures, other ways of life. Um, It's very important that kids are able to do that. So yes. Yeah, we want to make sure we have those as well. Um, Better Worlds, um, Denise talked a little bit about that. Um, I have had varying success with Better World books, Uh, not because it's been a long time since I've done that kind of thing, but um, I've had a lot of people say that it's not, it doesn't work as well anymore as it used to when they first started. It's harder to get them to accept things um, and uh, people aren't making money on those. I didn't, I should probably read what Denise said and see. Oh yeah, that's, that's really great ideas. Take them down and give them away to the kids. Only some, though. I mean, we, we still don't want to give away, you know, books that are biased or or books that are out of date. So make sure you exactly. look at that before you send them Exactly. To people. Last summer, we did that at the, at the library where I worked at, and we gave away withdrawn books with the permission of our, of our director. We got that permission to do that where um, parents were going to the food pantry to get their, to get Great food for their idea. kids. And then we would sign up kids for summer reading and we would give away withdrawn books with keeping that in mind, though, of those biases, uh, because kids don't look like that in the in the right. covers from the 80s or 90s. So <laughs> right. um, really keep that in mind. All right. Well, any other questions? I haven't seen anything come through. A lot of thank yous, Janae. We're really get, glad that you're able to do this. Yeah. Felicia says a better world wouldn't take a lot of their stuff. Thrift books. That's one that I don't know much about. Do you know anything oh, about no, thrift books? No, no, I don't either. With our, with the, with the system that I worked for, it was a bigger library system. So another supervisor had handled that. So. Right. Yes. 1130, 1131 now by mine. So unless somebody else has questions, um, we will sort of close this off. I think though, instead of closing it, uh, Angela, if you can hang out, a little bit. Angela Forit is our um, behind the scenes CE person. I have a couple of questions for her. So you guys can all exit out if you want to hang out and hear what I have to ask Angela about. That's Thank great you guys too. so much. Thank you. Let me close the recording. And yes, the slides will be